cooperative and highly adaptable, it should come as no surprise that at one time, wolves were a dominant species with extraordinary spread around the globe. The only animal more cooperative and adaptable than the wolf is us. But that hasn't worked out too well for the wolf over the past few hundred years. During human settlement in the late 1800s, there were a lot of places that adopted anti-predator campaigns. And since wolves were a prime predator in the area, they became a prime target. And in a lot of places across the country, they were almost entirely exterminated. Fortunately, wolves aren't quite the target that they used to be in some places. With the protection of the Endangered Species Act and the hard work of conservation organizations, wolves did make a comeback. Gray wolves now number about 1,500 in the West and 4,000 in the Great Lakes area. And there's potential room for more. Even with all the areas settled by humans, several states still have enough space for suitable wolf habitats. But for that to happen, it'll take a change of heart. Make no mistake, wolves prefer a wild prey. But wild prey can be scarce. And there are areas where livestock comes in close proximity to wolves and livestock deaths can occur. So you might be able to understand why farmers and ranchers may view wolves as nothing more than a threat to their livestock and livelihood. We spend a lot of time with uh, like proactive management efforts that try to reduce the potential for wolf and livestock conflicts before they happen. Some conservation groups work with ranchers to explore ways of coexisting with wolves, teaching ranchers how to keep their livestock from becoming prey. A lot of the environmental groups put money onto the ground to help us prevent wolves and livestock from coming in conflict with one another. We have some partnerships with our, our sister agencies like the Forest Service, and they look at different cattle rotations when wolves are denning so that we can try to move cows away from denning wolves. Beyond teaching farmers and ranchers how to avoid conflicts with wolves, there's a much larger need for broader education and a cultural change at large. It could be argued that the only wolf we need to eliminate is the mythical big bad wolf that we've created in our own imaginations. For me, conservation is so important and education goes hand in hand with that. Uh, you can't save a species unless you are learning about them and unless you are teaching children and adults alike about why it's so important. Why it's so important is that the wolf is what's called an apex predator. Without the wolf doing its job, certain species such as elk start to overpopulate and spread disease. An overabundance of elk can lead to damage of entire tree species. Now smaller animals that depend on those trees are in trouble and suddenly the delicate balance of a forest is thrown out of whack. All for lack of an animal that serves a vital role. But it doesn't have to be that way. We can restore wolf populations and we can preserve our ecosystems. It just requires that we all make a decision. There's plenty of habitat left for wolves. It just depends on whether or not we want wolves there.